Welcome to Survive Outdoors. Dan Williams here. We're going to talk about the top 10 ways people die in the outdoors. This came from the National Park Foundation. So the cross section of people, you got to take that in consideration. A lot of inexperienced people, tourists. So it's important to look at that. I'm also going to add some additions in here because what they did is they generalized some areas. So here we go. Number 10, wildlife. National Park was looking specifically at large wildlife, bears, uh, bison. However, they didn't add in there, which I think is important because everybody is uh, looking at poisonous snakes and other critters that can cause death. In actuality, venomous snakes in the United States, you get on average around five to six people a year dying from venomous snakes. Very rare. And pretty well all of those are people doing things they shouldn't do. Uh, bee stings, that should be included in there. On average, around 60 people a year die from an anaphylactic reaction from a bee or wasp sting. So those are in that area. Bears, bison, very, very rare, very rare. But when that happens, it makes national news, it's on the media, it's very dramatic, and everybody looks at it and it begins to give the appearance that it's very common when it's not. Number nine, firearm accidents. It's very rare for hunters to actually die in a firearm accident. It did make the top 10, but it's very low. Injuries, on the other hand, a deer hunter, for example, in their lifetime, one out of every three deer hunters are gonna get injured going into their stand or coming out of their stand. Not so much falling once they're in their stand and falling out of it. So that's number nine. Number eight, hypothermia. So in 2007, 2006, I was honored enough to consult with Fox News nationally on the Mount Hood avalanche. Three individuals died from hypothermia there. Um, very sad situation. There also about, I think it was last year, a father and two of his children were hiking in the Ozarks in Missouri and the weather changed drastically. He did not have any jackets for them or for him. He didn't have a makeshift shelter uh, and they all three died of hypothermia. Very sad situation. So as you've seen in my videos, you want to have a shelter. Uh, you want to have some type of coat. I'm Even if it's friggin' August, you know, I mean, you should really just very lightweight. So those are things you should be thinking about. Number seven, heat stroke. So in heat stroke, we're going to combine that with dehydration. Also, we're going to add diarrhea in that because with diarrhea, you're going to get dehydration. And we've talked about waterborne illnesses, Giardia, Cryptosporidium, uh, E. coli. Um, so really important to boil your water. Be hydrated, hydrate before you go out. Really, really important. Number six, pre-existing conditions. So I, when I was talking in the video about getting fit, this is right up the alley of what I was addressing. We're talking about heart attacks, strokes, diabetes. If you're 40 years old or older, you should see a healthcare provider. You need a blood workup. You need to be checked, especially if there's a cardiac history in your family. You want to have all that down. You want to start exercising, lose some weight, get fit before you go out. A ton of people are out there hiking and backpacking and their blood pressure is out of control and they're not in good shape. Number five, avalanche. We're talking about snow, mud, rock. Uh, high mortality rate. You have an avalanche of snow, you have all these young pups going out there skiing, taking some risks, going off trail. Um, so you don't get a lot of morbidity, but the mortality is pretty high when compared to other other recreational uh, things you're going to be doing in the outdoors. Non-medical transport. So someone is injured in your party and you need to transport them out of the situation and get them to a hospital or facility. What usually happens is you're anxious, you're scared, and you rush. And when that happens, someone else is going to get injured or they die. 
So very, very important to sit, compose yourself, look at the situation, transport the person out. If you're having difficulty with that, then you need to sit down and think about how you're going to get this person out or send somebody else or send yourself and leave them there. Obviously, it depends on the seriousness of the injury. Number three, falls. So we're, not, we're talking about not just mountaineering and someone falling off the side of a cliff or the rope breaks. We're not talking about Alex Honnold, who's free solo climbing. We're talking about also just falls, hiking, getting too close to the edge, falling on the rocks. Uh, a few years ago, I, way back, actually, when I was a paramedic, a lady slipped and fell in a store, uh, hit her head on the turnstile where you walk through, had a cervical fracture and passed away. Freak accident, but it happens. Now you go out in the outdoors and you fall and hit your head, you have a subdural bleed uh, and trying to get back as soon as you can to a hospital facility. So falls in general, high mortality rate. Number two, vehicle accidents. Again, this is in the park. We're talking about vehicle accidents a lot of times with large animals, bison, bear, elk, moose. You know, people are driving, they're very careless, they're listening to some tunes on the radio, they're talking about their, their day with someone else, coming back at night, and they hit a large animal. So that is number two on the list. And number one is drowning. So basically there's three types of drowning. We're ta not talking about someone out there swimming and they get tired or they get cramps, they go under. That is one of them. We're also talking about dry drowning and shallow water blackout. Shallow water blackout, we all did as a kid where we're at the end of the pool and we go, we hold our breath, we go underwater, we have no oxygen coming in, CO2 rises, it triggers and because of lack of oxygen and we trigger a syncope episode and we pass out underwater. And guess what happens when that happens is we go and we drown. The um, other one is dry drowning and dry drowning is when an individual, they can have a third of a teaspoon of water go in their mouth their, hits their larynx and then it spasms. You get laryngeal spasm and they can't breathe. So dry drowning, shallow water blackout, and then your basic drowning. Those are the three main ones that happen. So drowning is the number one cause of death in the outdoors in national parks. I hope you benefited from this. If we know how people are dying and what the top 10 are, we can actually take and some behavior and change that. You know, we can do things to increase our safety. So think about all those. If you have anything you want to add and put it in the discussion, that would be awesome. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, keep your eyes on the rise and your face to the wind. I'll see you next time. Take care.